It's no secret. The best way to learn about Hope College is to spend time on our campus. The Hope Admissions team invites you to a personalized visit experience you won't forget. Located in downtown Holland, Michigan, our historic campus is close to shopping and dining and just 10 minutes from Lake Michigan. We invite you to check out our campus tour options or sign up for an online tour with the Hope Admissions Office. There's never been a better time to see Hope College. Visit us at hope.edu slash admissions. Hello, and welcome to Hope College, uh, a glimpse of hope amidst the pandemic. Um, my name is Nate Haveman. I work here in the admissions office. Really, thanks for joining us tonight. We've got a, a great hour planned talking to current students about their, their first semester at Hope and what they're looking forward to uh, next semester. We've got two fantastic faculty members, and we also have President Scogan joining us. So many of you, as you sit, sit at home, I know there's a lot of stress right now, um, but a year from now, you'll have packed your bags. A year from now, you'll have finished your first semester. A year from now, you'll have decorated, decorated your rooms. You'll have overslept a class. You'll have studied too late. For parents out there listening and watching, you've likely had tearful goodbyes. You probably didn't know you could text uh, your students so, so often and FaceTime as well. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on and a year from now, you'll have already, you'll be halfway through and it's exciting. Of course, it's scary, but it's also exciting. Um, and right now you're likely thinking about uh, the place you're gonna be. I mean, that's why you're here. That's why you've joined us this evening. You're thinking about, am I gonna go to a big school? Is it a small school? Is it around the corner? Is it across the country? Your checklist could be really, really long. Your checklist may just have a couple of things on it that you're still looking for. Your checklist might just be, I'm coming to hope and, and you're done and that's exciting too. But you have a checklist, that's what you have in common. Everyone listening right now is wondering about college next year. So there's some stress, I get it. There's some stress there. Um, and that's why we're here. I'm gonna give you some advice at the top, which I think is helpful. And I'm no stranger to advice. I, I really do actually really enjoy giving advice. Um, and I'm gonna give you some advice at the end. So in the middle, you're gonna get advice from people who, as I said, are living this experience, who are either you know, in class learning or who are teaching those classes. You're gonna hear from President Scogan who's leading us through the pandemic. We're gonna have some general questions, as college search related questions that I think will be helpful. Um, but I also really wanna dig into what it's been like at Hope this first semester. We've been, we've been here, we've been on campus. Our students have been here on campus. And what does that actually look like? So thanks for being here. And I wanna welcome in to start our students. So we've got Jacob Woodford, he's the senior this year. Um, majoring in, uh, well, he's on the pre-law track, there he is, um, and he's majoring in, remind me, Jacob, I think uh, we talked about kinesiology and psychology, is that right? And then, yeah, and then political science as well. And, and political science, and Marvelous Ogadoro, Ogadoro is um, majoring in double major philosophy and poli-sci as well, yes, and finally, Natalie Guest, she's our freshman, fantastic, and she's majoring in nursing with a Spanish minor. Did I get all those right, guys? Fantastic. So um, let's start. I, th I think it's just helpful to hear where you're from. I've, I've told them what you're studying, but uh, talk about where you're from and, and anything that you're involved in uh, at Hope this year. And Jacob, you can start. Why don't we just go Jacob, Marvelous, Natalie. Perfect. Yeah, happy to start. So like I said, my name is Jacob. Uh, I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado. So not, not a Michigan, not a, not a Midwesterner at all. I'm a little ways from home. Um, but I've really, really enjoyed my time at Hope, and I'm pretty involved on campus. I play for the Hope's hockey team. I'm a goalie for them, um, and then I'm a senior class rep for our student congress, along with being the campus life chair. I've been involved with Dance Marathon, which is a fundraiser that we do at Hope, um, and obviously I'm in admissions as well as a tour guide. Um, hi, my name is Marvelous. I am an international student from Nigeria, so just a bit further than where Jacob is from. Um, <laughs> outside, <laughs> outside of classes, I'm also involved in the Phelps Scholars Program. I do some stuff for the international student um, department and also just um, I've done some stuff with Student Congress as well. And I also work for the admissions office. 
Hi, my name is Natalie and I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm also involved in the Phelps Scholars Program. And I've been, I've done Bible study and I've also done Family Relations Committee for Dance Marathon. Um, I've done College Chorus and I also am a tour guide for admissions. Wow, you said you're a freshman, Natalie? I am freshman. Wow, that's a lot. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, before we get into the questions, Marvelous and Natalie, you both, both mentioned Phelps Scholars. Can you give me a, you know, 30 second, what is Phelps Scholars? Give us a um, the Phelps Scholars program, so it's a living learning community. So what that means is we have about 70 to 80 students part of the program in your freshman year. So typically you live in a dorm together and it just, the program specifically specifically focuses on just helping students navigate multicultural environments. So we have people from different parts of the country and also parts of the world, because at the end of the day, learning how to engage with people who are different from you and from different backgrounds is an important skill to learn. So that's kind of this. Yeah. Wonderful, thanks. Um, and I'm actually gonna start with, with Jacob and Marvelous for this first question, Natalie. So sit tight, you're gonna get a, a question right, right after. But um, Marvelous and Jacob, you were here pre-pandemic and lived through it as well. You've been on campus. What's it been like? I mean, let, I don't want to have a loaded question here. What, what, what's it been like at Hope now um, versus what it was like before? Yeah, it definitely, it's definitely a unique experience, but I think it hasn't been as different as maybe I expected, um, which has been really nice. I think a big thing that we always mention uh, that's sort of the, a great thing about Hope is, is this intense feeling of community and a real sense of belonging. And a lot of that comes from really good relationships, both with students, other students, and like faculty members and that set type of thing. Um, and so there was definitely a little bit of a concern that that side of things might kind of go away. But I think we've done a really good job of being able to maintain those relationships and being able to maintain this, the same type of events that we do, albeit in different ways and with different limitations of things on them. But it, it hasn't felt as different as I expected. Um, I feel like I'm still seeing people that aren't in, in like my, in, so I live off campus now as a senior and I see people that aren't just in my house still. Um, and I still get to have those interactions and I still get to go to class. It's not like I'm just holed up in my house all the time. Um, I still get to see my teammates, that type of thing. So it, it's been different for sure. There's a lot of adjustments to be made, but it hasn't been, it still feels like hope and that's awesome. Yeah. Marvelous, anything to add? Um, yeah, it's definitely been <laughs> pretty intense. I, as an international student, I think we've had like a somewhat unique perspective because kind of saw like people leave and then campus be quiet and everyone come back. And I think, at least for me in particular, I've come to really appreciate the precautions and steps that Hope has put in place to allow like me be able to still have these great discussions with faculty members and my friends in person. Hope is actually one of the few schools that was able to like complete the semester and that's come through like the many innovative steps that we've taken both as like a student body and as like the entire school itself so i think it's definitely been a transition for sure things aren't the same um there are some restrictions in place but i think the essence of hope is still there our community is still as strong as ever and i'm happy about that well that was good the essence of hope is still there and as strong as ever that's a line right there marvelous um thanks for that guys um natalie as a freshman, you didn't have a chance. I mean, you may have visited Hope and you likely did, but you didn't live it. Um, so what's it been like for you this first semester? Yeah, so this first semester has been like a huge adjustment as any time going to college and especially with COVID, it's, it was very different from my high school experience, of course, just like college. But um, for me, I really enjoyed being able to make friends in creative ways and in new ways, especially in the beginning of the summer. I think it was really helpful for me to start college off when things were a lot easier, especially with being able to go outdoors and going to the beach with friends or just meeting up in the Pine Grove or just um, being able to form those relationships with people, even like during the pandemic. And also I've really, really enjoyed um, having both in-person and online classes. It was amazing for me to meet with professors and also um, form relationships with professors, just doing online classes, but also in-person classes as well, or hybrid as well. Um, and in terms of just like activities and like involving myself, I found it so easy to get involved. And it was just great to be able to have all these opportunities to pursue things that I like outside of my major too, because I think it's really important to do that as freshmen. Oh, great. That's fantastic. Um, when all three of you are talking, it reminded me, you know, I'm a 2002 grad of Hope. So it's been a while. 
Well, one of my favorite things about uh, being on campus was the Christian dimension for me. That was really important. And so chapel, you know, as I think back, chapel was probably the most important part of my time at Hope. You know, chapel's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's 20 minutes. That has definitely changed. Are any of you, do, do any of you go to chapel? What does that look like this year? Um, because that is different. That's very different. Anyone? Yeah, I could probably speak to it a little bit. So, I mean, I've I've attended chapel since I got to Hope. I really didn't like it. One of the things that I think is probably the coolest thing about our chapel is the voluntary nature of it, which is mm -hmm. really important to me because I think I think non-voluntary chapels can be a little weird <laughs> because people are just <laughs> they have to be. Um, and I like the fact that we you know in a normal semester when we have everyone in the chapel, they're all there because they want to be, and that's kind of cool. Um, but obviously it is different now with it being online and thing, things like that. But I think we've found ways to make it work. Uh, one of our other tour guides actually is named JD. He sort of figured out a really cool way to do this where he has this massive speaker and a Bluetooth speaker and he'll take it out. One of our main areas that we got, and Natalie mentioned it, is the Pine Grove. Uh, and so he, what he's been doing is he'll take his big old speaker and his computer out there and just set it up in the Pine Grove and, and just stream chapel. And so then you can have a similar type of community gathering outside and socially distanced with masks and all that type of stuff. So you get people still together, still worshiping, still experiencing chapel in a similar way, even though we can't all be physically present in the chapel as we sort of like to be normally. So it's, it's different. It's hard for sure. I think sometimes it's, it's harder to be, to feel as connected, especially with the worship. Um, but it, we, there's, I think we've done a good job of trying to, by not only streaming it effectively, but also finding ways to sort of have that sense of community while still experiencing chapel. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for that. Um, so let's let's shift just quickly to rigor of hope. This is a question I got today. And so selfishly, I was like, I'm going to ask it. I'm just going to ask it for sure, because I've got the I've got the mic right now. So I get asked a lot about the rigor of hope. Does hope stack up to other schools? Um, you've all been in, you know, you've all been here for at least a semester. How do you feel hope has prepared you for the next thing? whether, you know, Jacob, you're graduating soon. And then Marvelous and Natalie, obviously that's on the horizon for you, but how is Hope preparing you for what's next? Natalie, why don't you, why don't you start? You're the, you're the, the freshman of the group. Yeah, I would say that it was really rigorous. And I think even with online courses, it was still just as rigorous. The professors still push you just as hard. But I think um, even if with the difficulty, they also make sure that you're supported. And I think that's one of the really unique things about hope. And my classes were definitely difficult, science and language and um, also FYS, even your first year seminar challenges you to read and critically think and everything. So I think that yes, it's very rigorous and, but I learned so much. It was so rewarding. And also having that, those professors be there for you and it at a, a hand call away, it's, it was great. Great. Um, I would say the same thing. The Hope College education is fantastic. I, one thing I would also like to point out is that Hope kind of meets you where you're at. So there will like, on average, it is a very rigorous program and you will come leave Hope fully like graduating and being like capable, productive member of society. But there are also like individuals on campus and some of them are friends and actually President Skogan probably be one of them, people who like take, go further with their academics. And that's, I think he might speak to that later about him like eventually being able to enter at the White House just because of that more intense rigor that you can ask from professors and stuff like that. So there is also the opportunity for the students if like, I know a lot of students on here right now might be looking at like, what if I go to like a bigger school with more intense like academics, but there are also, there's also something to be said about like having those one-on-one -on -one connections with your professors when they can like really invest in you as a person. And I think a lot of people would speak to that. That's great, thank you. Um, so I know we're running short on time here, but I, there's, there's more questions I wanna ask because I do think when I talk with students in my role in admissions, so often um, I encourage them to hear from students. That's my big piece of advice You know, at the top. I said I was gonna give advice at the top. And that's my big piece of advice is to, to hear from students like you who are living the experience because not every day is gonna be like sunshine and blue skies and, and great. There's gonna be lows because it's college and it's life. And knowing that you have people around you to support you, you've all sort of touched on already. And I think that's an important uh, aspect of, of hope, um, something that I certainly found. Um, so thanks for speaking to that. The other thing I wanna get to though, is students are also looking for what happens outside of the school day. 
Um, hope is not just about, college is not just about getting a degree. It is about getting a degree, but it's not just about getting a degree. It's also about all the stories and little interactions that happen, happen between classes and after class and on the weekends. So I guess that's the longest preamble to a question ever. What do you do for fun? Let's go. What do we do for fun? There's so much to do. I think we all kind of spoke from the top when we were just mentioning what we're involved in. And yep. it's so easy. The problem with hope is not finding things to get involved in. It's finding what not to get involved in. because It's much easier to get over involved than it yeah. is to not find things to do. Um, and so I, I think that's a really special aspect of it. Uh, you know, is that most of our students stay on campus during the weekends. There's, there's always things going on. Uh, one of my housemates is actually he's, he's the director of our student activities committee. And so he's like always working yeah. to put on these events during the week and specifically on the weekends, putting on sort of larger events. And we've even done that during this, this pandemic. They've still found ways to host these, these large scale events um, in, in safe ways so we can get those, those fun things happening during the weekend. So there's, there's always stuff to do and there's always interesting clubs to be involved in. I know I've been involved in like the fly fishing club. The yeah. ski club is a huge thing. One of my other buddies was the president of the outdoor adventure club. So a lot of things to get involved in outside of school. Natalie, you're marvelous. Anything to add there? Yeah, for me, one of the things that I did was with my friends and I would go to lecture halls and watch movies. And we'd also do, especially on Friday nights, my friends and I would go to downtown. So it's just walking distance from camp from campus. It was so nice. It was five minute walk downtown and we would go and decide on a different restaurant to try every Friday. So we went to like Mizu Sushi and Hopcat. So it was so fun to just like try the different restaurants and just like have different food from the dining hall, even though we love Phelps. A different food in the dining hall. <laughs> yes, for sure. Marvelous. Um, yeah, so it would be a similar thing. I know friends and I have gone together and like done movie nights and I'm also, I'm a big reader. So my friends and I have like done book clubs together. Um, and just, I also enjoy cooking with my friends and making food but from back home is something that we engage in. Also, I don't know if anyone has touched on this, but Greek life is also, um, also does take up some time for students on campus. I would say maybe about 40% of students are involved in Greek life. And that is something that could be a source of community and fun for um, prospective students looking at that. Thanks for mentioning that. Are, are any of you involved in Greek life or is this not part of the group? Okay. I live with a bunch of them and it's, it's pretty nice. Hockey, we don't allow it, um, but you still get a lot of those interactions with people. Well, it's just kind of, it's because our playoffs happen at the same time as, as Rush. Okay. So we just don't do it, but I've got a lot of good friends in it. And I've really seen kind of like Marvelous mentioned that it's, it's a really beneficial thing to those that are involved in it. Just adds a little, another, another layer to your experience at Hope. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so you're coming back to campus soon. What, what are you most looking forward to? Like what, what out there that you've just been missing? You've just been missing uh, Hope in what way? Anyone can start, anyone. For yeah. me, it was, I'm really excited to see my friends and also meet the new professors that I have. But I think for me, it's the freedom. Like back home, yes, I'm under my parents' roof and they're like, my house, my rules, all this stuff. <laughs> so I'm just excited for the freedom and to see my friends again that I've missed so much these past few months and just having the freedom to leave my dorm whenever I want to meet up and just decide what to do spontaneously, but also to study with them and just continue on our studies. Yeah, so mine would also be kind of related to what Natalie said. So I've been on, I've been in Holland through like Christmas break for the most part of it. And I'm just really looking forward to everyone returning. Um, and just like those random interactions in the student center or walking in the Pine Grove. And yes, right now it takes a couple extra seconds to recognize faces because of masks, but I'm still looking forward to the spark that will like be there when we like scream our names and stuff like that. So definitely looking forward to having friends back. Uh, this is my last semester, last semester at Hope, and I'm I'm very excited for it because it's been an unbelievable experience, and I'm really excited to, to finish it out strong. Uh, you know, it's always kind of funny doing these events this year, like because I'm always you know it's it's fun being in admissions, and it's really interesting talking to people that are coming in as I'm going out, because I remember being there, um, and I'm I'm really excited to to finish strong and to, and to really finish Hope on a high note because it's been amazing. Yeah. Um. We got a great question on the chat. So, um, or earlier when, when students were registering, they were able to, to add a question. One of the ones that really stood out to me was, um, how do students maintain and form relationships 
with each other. Marvelous, you, you just mentioned masks. And probably, it probably does take a little bit longer just for that spark of recognition. But how are you maintaining and forming relationships? Um, that, how did you do it this past semester? Mm, I would say for me specifically and my friend group, I think it's just come down to being more intentional. Um, for my friend group of like six, seven friends, we would like have dinner nights like every Friday. It's kind of similar to what Natalie had was like going downtown and making sure you're getting these meals and cuts. It is a bit easier to like lose track of things, like especially when you are like when everyone is distant and not necessarily together, but just being more intentional with like keeping up with people has been very important to me. But I would say even though so with like dorm life, as opposed to everyone in like the hall getting in the hall of like 75 people getting to know each other we now have you're still there with your community with your floor so that's really a point of contact for people natalie could you could you actually as a freshman could you answer that too because i think that's a unique perspective um, that a lot of students might be coming into next year yeah so for me i actually found my best friends through like very interesting ways um one of my best friends i met her through another friend so i would say one thing for me was mutual friends and meeting people through other people has been an amazing experience i really didn't see how i would be able to do that and i thought i was really worried i coming into freshman year i was so worried like i'm i was so worried that i was just gonna come in and just kind of sit there and be like oh my gosh i have no friends but um i actually <laughs> met people and the connections that i made were so nice natural it was just like sparks just like marvelous had said so i would say just like meeting people through other people and also meeting people at locations that you just ended up being happening to be there at the same time as other people i met another one of my best friends at good time donuts and we were just happened to be there at the same time so for me it was just the natural connections and finding commonalities that was my huge thing for me great and we've only got time th thanks guys we only got time for a couple of more questions um one uh, is, is also from um, from the, the registration link. Um, and I, I'm gonna ask this, I think of, of, of everyone on tonight, just because I think it's such an important question right now. And, and that is, what are you more thankful for about hope than you were pre-pandemic? Like, wh what was that silver lining? Were you able to find a silver lining this semester and say like, oh man, I wouldn't have been able to do that without this. Or has it been, it's been okay, it's been okay. Where are you kind of at with that with that question? What 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 are you more thankful for about hope now than you were before the pandemic? I think if I could just start, what I one thing that's really been noticeable has been uh, the lack of athletics. So, like I mentioned, I played hockey here, and we didn't get to play hockey for a semester. And hockey is kind of a sport that that goes over both, um, and so it was really strange not having that same time during the week dedicated to practicing games and, and just hanging out with the with the guys and with the team um, all those things kind of had to be curtailed a little bit just because of the nature of the pandemic um and we're supposed to you know we're, we're supposed to start our training camp in five days and so we're going to be able to play this semester hopefully and i'm you, you kind of you don't know what you have till it's gone sometimes right <laughs> and that's one of those things that i've definitely felt with with hockey with athletics is i'm, re I'm really thankful for this this last semester to get to play because we didn't get to play first semester yeah yeah thanks for that marvelous what about you um i think for me i've really come to like appreciate like the size of hope so hope is like a small liberal arts school so we're looking at like 3,000 to 3,400 students and as someone who was initially looking at like the big schools in like texas california and new york because that's where you look at those are the states you look at when you're like international um and just having to eventually like decide to come to michigan and hope college more specifically i think the size has definitely come to be a benefit like apart from just being able to have more intimate connections i think one of the reasons that hope was able to navigate the pandemic and these changes so fast and in such an innovative way is because like we're relatively to be smaller school and we were it's much easier for us to adapt than like our bigger colleagues who are managing like 10,000 to 50,000 students so that is something that I have come to appreciate so much more this semester. Excellent. Natalie anything to add to that? I know it's your first semester but 
Yeah, so for me, I realized how grateful I am for technology, honestly, for me, because um, prior to the pandemic, I mean, we all knew we had smartphones, we had computers, we had internet, everything, but we really, this year specifically, we became so reliant on technology, and I got very close with a professor and never met, met him in person, and it was just my Spanish professor. Uh, we just had a solely based online class, and I became so close with him, and he wrote my right of recommendation from the nursing program. So it was amazing to see how I was able to form relationships with professors and how my professor can care about me without ever meeting me in person. So oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for that, guys. Last question. This is going to be a one word answer only. And the question is, what one piece of advice, one word, Jacob, we're going to start with you. Marvelous. Then Natalie, would you will you give to students as they kind of come into the end of their college search process, what should they be looking for in a college? What's your one piece of advice for students out there listening right now? They got a notepad in hand, ready to write it down. Uh, the thing I always tell students when they ask me that question, because it comes up on almost every tour, yeah. is you have if you don't feel like you fit in, then that's probably not the place for you. Like if, if you can't imagine yourself there, it's probably not it. And if, if hope doesn't feel that way to you, it's too bad because we'd love to have you here but just true it's like if you can't see yourself being successful if it doesn't feel right it's probably not right it was 74 words so <laughs> I'll try I, to I don't like rules Nate <laughs> <laughs> don't worry Nate I'll try to do a bit less um I would just say I would say be open to it I think for me like kind of going back to my experience was like I was kind of fixated on like big schools big city because I'm from a relatively huge city but I think when you start becoming open to like looking at the school, at least for me, it wasn't like, I didn't fall in like fall in love with hope the first time I saw it. Um, I did not open the website and was immediate. I wasn't like captured by the website. It was more like through interacting with students coming to events like this, um, talking to my admissions officer. So just be open to falling in love with hope. And I'm sure maybe you will get there. 75 words, good. <laughs> good. Natalie? My also be open-minded because me coming in before my freshman year, I was searching for the perfect college. I thought if it wasn't perfect, it wasn't it. And honestly, I realized that there will not be a perfect college. You won't go to a college visit and be like, this is the most perfect school ever. There's always going to be something that is not the best or something that you may want in another school. But for me, just stay open-minded because I think it's really important to learn more about the school and figure Figure out which one is the best for you but it will not be perfect and it won't be perfect but um that's what i would say yeah <laughs> those are great guys oh man and it, all kidding aside jacob thank you so much finding a place to be comfortable finding a place that you want to be is that's number one if you don't find a place you want to be oh it's hard to be happy there and if you're not happy you won't be productive if you're not productive you won't be successful so i agree and, and marvelous and natalie with being open to, to something new, something different, being open-minded to what else is out there. I think that's just really fantastic advice. So thanks for sharing that. And thanks for being here today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for taking time out and good luck with your spring semester. Enjoy your evening. Um, so thanks everybody um, for listening there. Now we uh, have the great pleasure to welcome in um, Dr. Heidi Krause and Dr. Je Jeff Johnson. Um, and they'll be on in just a moment here. Let me move some notes around. There's Heidi, perfect. And there's Jeff, great. Thanks for being here tonight, esteemed Ew. professors. Um, let me turn up my volume. Um, so Heidi, why don't we start with you? Um, I've given them your name and it says it on the screen, but why don't we say uh, academic department, how long you've been at Hope, um, and maybe let's start there for right now. Sounds good, yep. Yeah, so my name is Heidi Kraus and I teach modern and contemporary art history in the Department of Art and Art History. And I've been at Hope now for like 10 years. I'm, I'm the old lady on campus now. Um, okay. No longer a newbie, no longer a newbie. <laughs> Great, and then Jeff? Uh, yeah, so my name is Jeff Johnson. I am in the chemistry department uh, where I teach organic chemistry and also do some advising for the pre-med program. Um, and this is already my 14th year. So yeah, Heidi talks about being the old person on campus. I guess I, guess I got her beat. <laughs> so you, you both have a, a, a lot of history at Hope. What's it been like to teach in the COVID era? Uh, Heidi, you want to start again? Sure. Um, well, uh, Nate, it's not been easy. 
Um, it's challenging, right? Um, I have kids at home. I, I didn't envision teaching in my basement office uh, for you know the past nine months. But I think you know if I can be serious about it, I, I didn't become a professor to teach virtually. That wasn't you know what got me excited in order to get into to my field. Um, and so I think you know it's it's tempting to complain. Um, it, and it's easy, I think, if we would want to take kind of the, the easy road out or to do less than what we normally would um, in, in so-called precedented times, um, if you will. But I, it was interesting because over the summer, I had a colleague um, send me an, uh, a reading that I haven't read in many years, and it's by C.S. Lewis. Right. Um, some of you may know C.S. Lewis, Chronicles of Narnia. Um, he was Irish born taught at, at Oxford, a lay theologian, uh, theologian rather. And he wrote this amazing sermon called Learning in Wartime. And he wrote it in 1939, just, just at the beginning of, of World War II. And in it, and I was trying to figure out why my colleague was giving this to me, because apparently I've been complaining a lot. <laughs> but, but in it, in it, C.S. Lewis says that we must continue to pursue knowledge and beauty knowing that we are advancing God's vision or we're helping others to do so. Say, say it one more time. Say, say that one more time. I think it's we must continue to pursue knowledge and beauty, yeah. knowing that we are advancing God's vision yeah. uh, or we're helping others to advance God's vision. You know, so, so in other words, it was really kind of a, a call to duty, right? That, hey, you could say, why do I need to be in college right now? There's COVID. This is a awful, miserable, horrible time. I'm an art historian. Uh, what can I do, right, in terms of, of helping? But really rereading that made me think, but, but actually this, what, what could be more important um, than trying to advance knowledge? Um, and, and I think that really helped me and gave me a sense of, of purpose beyond what, what I um, normally would have had. Um, and, and I've been in awe of the, the work that faculty and staff have done. You've heard the students um, speak to it, but you know, good teaching is good teaching. And yeah. whether or not we are virtual or in person, I think it yeah. really speaks to Hope College and the excellent faculty and staff that we have that we've been able to carry on as, as well as we, we have. But I think, you know, COVID has really caused me to think more about how I teach, about what I teach and why I teach it. Um, and also, and, and the students may find this kind of interesting, but it, it actually made me think a lot more about what it's like to be a student in my classroom. Um, and you have to work so much more intentionally in order to, to get those relationships because you're not face-to-face -face in, in every circumstance. Um, but I found that it, it's just, if, if not as rewarding, um, certainly more so uh, right. for me lately. Yeah, oh, fantastic. Good luck following that, Jeff. <laughs> well, I will say I had a very distinct like uh, contrasting experience in the fact that my classes actually met in person all semester long. Um, so I was expecting kind of a virtual sort of environment uh, due to the fantastic work of like the facilities folks on campus and IT folks, I was actually moved my, my 50 person lecture into the great room in the student center. Yeah. Um, so this room is like, it's essentially, it's a ballroom with like natural lighting and the sun was coming in. And I mean, it was just a wonderful place. I've already <laughs> requested that I can teach there every semester from here. That's until right. We'll yeah. see how the registrar's office handles that request. But, <laughs> um, and so it was definitely different in the fact that there was this, the distancing and so on. It was challenging to get to know students. Um, I make it a, a, a personal point to get to know all the names of the students in my class within the first week. Uh, this one took me about two and a half or three weeks to get to know everybody because, of course, it's, you know, I get half the face and it takes twice the time, I guess. Um, so those sorts of things. I realized that in my classes, I try to avoid the straight lectures and have an interactive uh, environment, even something in, in something as daunting as organic chemistry. And that was harder. That was the challenge. I realized that students do, I do a lot of lip reading apparently during normal semesters where students aren't quite sure of the answer and they'll kind of whisper it to themselves or maybe whisper to their neighbor. Yeah. So those things changed. Um, but really, as I said at the outset, I was lucky enough that it was a relatively normal semester in that sense. Uh, our labs also were primarily in person. We had to do some kind of uh, organizing things to do essentially labs and shifts. So every other week we had students in person and doing an, a virtual portion of our labs. 
Uh, but ultimately, students still got at least a large portion of that kind of traditional in-person lab experience that we've prided ourselves on for years. Yeah, I did have a question. I'll just follow up with you on that now. Like, how how did research? Can you how did that look this semester? Uh, you mentioned in shifts. You don't have to go into great detail, but uh, we did have some questions about that. Sure, we're very proud in the in the sciences in particular, but really across campus about the research program. Uh, and this summer, we were actually able to get our summer research program going for about the last five weeks before. Yeah. Uh, classes started. Um, and yeah, that entailed a lot of, you know, distinct spacing in the labs and kind of determining how many people could be in a given room at certain times and things like that. Um, and so both through the summer and into the semester, where I normally would pile three, four, five students into my lab space at a given time, we really had to organize to make sure that people would essentially come in in pairs. So I'd be in the area and we get two at a time which really sort of helped. It made, it made students kind of think about their experiments a little more. They'd come in and set something up, push it to the side, let it keep running while the next shift of students would come yeah. in. Yeah. And so it really, it actually ended up fostering a lot of communication, a lot of planning, and really a lot of kind of those bonus skills that you don't necessarily think of right off the bat. Um, but all of my things are moving forward. Yeah, that's great. And, and Heidi, I just wanted to follow up with you on the first one too. Um, one of the other questions we got was how how are we connecting or how are you connecting with students this fall and how is that different you know jeff is kind of you know he, most of his classes or all of his classes are in person but with yours being online how hard has that been like how have you done that how have you had to go beyond what you've done in the past yeah i mean and, and that's always been what's been so rewarding is that student interaction and you know i constantly am telling students you know in my undergrad experience i, I didn't go to hope I mean, I never had that kind of interaction and that one-on-one -on -one, um, to the extent that we do and that we pride ourselves on and really what makes hope so so unique. The answer to that is, you know, I, I've taught classes both synchronously and asynchronously, mm -hmm. yet I would always require every week, even with my asynchronous classes, that they come and they check in with me, even if they have nothing to say, right? Even if they just need some, even if they just want to occupy the same space um because i want to check in on them and so actually i think i got to know my students better by doing that than i actually had previously sure. you know when i'd have 30 35 students in a classroom and yeah i get to know everyone know their names and and hear about them but this i was requiring you to be sure to interact with Absolutely. me Absolutely. Yep. and you know i had some students who you know I, I, I honestly, it almost makes me emotional because there were some students who said, you know, thank you so much for make, for doing this because I just, I needed to talk with somebody and I needed to, to get outside of my head for a little bit. And, you know, and it was really rewarding to be trusted um, also in that way with, with students. So, you know, for me, really having that one-on-one -on -one time and, and requiring it at first, I think students are saying, you know, why is she requiring this? Um, but, you know, and, and, you know, for those pers perspectives who are watching, we actually love when you come to our office hours. Um, it's not a scary place. We love it. I get lonely in office hours when no one comes. So I just required it this time. Um, and it was really a, a great experience. Oh, that's so good. Thank you so much much for sharing that. Um, I want to shift a little bit to academics. And I know we've been talking about academics, but Hope, uh, I, I asked this question if you were if you were on, I asked this question of the students as well. One question I get fairly often, and I think other reps do is how does Hope stack up? Like a lot of the students that are looking at Hope are looking at maybe schools with bigger names, um, more well-known names, a different brand. Um, I'm sure you get this question um, and you know where your students are going. But if I just ask it right there, like, how does hope stack up? How would you answer that? Uh, Jeff, you can go first, or Heidi, I don't. Jeff, you go first. A <laughs> right. couple, couple of different things. So uh, within the classes themselves, some of the things that, that we do, particularly in the chemistry department, is, is have standardized exams that are put up by the American Chemical Society. And so we will you know, measure ourselves up by a yardstick as kind of generic as that with other programs across the country. And I will very proudly say, and I'll, I'll yell from the you know, front of any room I'm in, is that um, you know, my students in any given year typically score, the average student in my class actually two years ago um, scored in the 90th percentile nationwide. So the entire class as a, as a whole averaged the 90th percentile of students nationwide taking organic chemistry. If nothing else, I mean, we're, we're putting them, you know, through, through their paces. Uh, in those courses. And so um, those sorts of things pay off. Every fall, I have students come back to my office from previous classes. They took the MCAT over the summer and they say that organic chemistry section was easy on the MCAT. So that's what I continually tell my students. You think it's hard now, that'll be okay. You'll thank me later after you take right. the MCAT. Um, 
kind of thinking about where do students go. Um, yeah. For example, this uh, this semester right now, I have a couple seniors who are re doing research in my lab. Uh, they've both done interviews, actually virtual interviews uh, for graduate school just in the last week, uh, one at Berkeley and another at Yale. And so they're coming up like that. Those are those are going on, you know, throughout the spring here for, for several more months. Uh, it gives you an example of the sorts of programs that they're interested in. Within the last year, I've had students graduate with their uh, PhDs in chemistry from um, MIT and Columbia. And so ultimately, students graduate from our programs and essentially go wherever they want. Um, there's a lot of those opportunities are there. People are there. The other bonus that I will say is that the students who are there now love to share their experience and knowledge with current students. And so it's really one of those great things is that somebody comes and tells me they're interested in going to school. They're checking out this sort of school in this place. And I can look through our list and say, oh, we had a graduate two years ago who's now in that program. I'll hook you up. So yeah. hope students, hope graduates love to give back to hope students. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that sentiment. Okay, thanks. That's great, Jeff. Heidi, anything to add there? So, I, Nate, I have to, I have to say, every, uh, you know, I've heard this question a couple times tonight about the rigor. It always surprises me because, yes, of course it's rigorous. And I think kind of getting to to Jeff's comment, you know, I think of, and, and Nate will love this because I'm, I'm touting uh, some admissions speak here, but, you know, Hope was the first private liberal arts college to be not in Michigan to be nationally accredited in art, in music, in theater, in dance. We have national standards that we have to um, adhere to. And also, I think I'm surprised by the question, just because I, I'm used to seeing my colleagues and seeing that they are not only excellent teachers, but they are also excellent scholars. And by the way, the two are not necessarily you know, mutually exclusive, right? I know a lot of, of researchers who are not so good teachers and some great teachers who aren't good scholars. But hope really walks that walk. And I admit, being an outsider to hope, you know, the first time ever I ever even came to Michigan was when I interviewed for the position. And so I didn't know anything about hope, um, aside that it was on Lake Michigan and they had an opening. So I was ready. Um, and, you know, and, and I kind of am like, my God, like, is this for real? Like, do they really actually value teaching and research? Or is this kind of like a, a talk? It's not. Um, and, and I think, too, that sometimes there can be for a, for a school that is ro as robustly Christian as we are, I think sometimes people want to question whether or not a four-year liberal arts college can both be academically excellent and be robustly Christian. Um, and the answer is yes, it can. And that's why we're so unique in this. Um, and a lot of that, again, I think has to do with our incredibly talented faculty who um, you, right? They, they are professors. They profess what it is they have learned. They don't just um, sit idly by, but rather these are some of the top of the top in their fields. Yeah, that's great. And I, I am thrilled you're so offended by the question. I mean, that's great. That's my favorite part of the whole night so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so you, you did touch on Hope's a Christian School, and you said rigorously Christian. I would completely agree with that. Um, how is that lived out in the classrooms um, for you? And maybe if I can add on to that question, I know we're running short on time. Has that been tougher with with COVID um, to, to, to bring that into the classroom? Heidi, why don't you go first since you're unmuted? So I would say actually it's been easier with COVID. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. I, I like to take a position that, I, and my students laughing when I say this, but they get it later on. I like to follow what I call a pedagogy of kindness. That doesn't mean that I let my students walk all over me, but rather it means I have compassion. I have compassion for my students. My students have compassion for me. You know, if you're late to class one day, okay, right? I mean, I understand that's not ideal, but maybe something happened in your life and I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. And right now, I think what we need more than anything is compassion. Um, and so I really try to, to embody this pedagogy of kindness. Again, it's not me smacking Christianity over, over someone's head because going back to what the students said, that's what's been, been so rewarding and wonderful about my experience at Hope is the, the kind of invitational nature, right? It's not that you know we're gonna throw Christianity down your throat, but rather the way people live their lives and how they try to be, this is how we can best show um, Christ to, to our students. And so hopefully by having that, that emphasis on compassion um, that we can really focus also on developing the whole student not just focusing strictly on the academics. And in COVID, right, I mean, this is what we need. We need to be present with people 
as was rightly mentioned, getting the degree is, is the purpose, but there's so much more that goes into a college experience. And right now we need to love each other as Christ loved us and just experience and, and profess as much kindness as we can. Yeah. Thanks for that. Jeff, anything to add there? That was wonderful. I will say Heidi gave a phenomenal answer and I yeah. will, I will throw it back to you, Nate. Yeah, that was, that was great. I wondered that was, thank you so much, Heidi. Um, so just, just one more, one more question here. Um, and, and I mentioned this at the top, like, I think it's so important for students to heed advice uh, from faculty that they could be, you know, have classes with from students who they might be classmates with. And so what's one piece of advice uh, both of you would give to, especially maybe for seniors, but for, for students who are, they're close, they're, they're choosing a school next year. Um, what's one piece of advice you could give? Maybe Jeff, you could, you could lead us off. Sure. I would say get used to asking questions. And so that could be questions both to find out more information, but also questions to admit that you don't know, you don't understand it in a full way or something like that. Ask questions. And that's the thing that I will say even now I work on becoming more open and asking those questions. But the more questions you, you can ask, the more doors open and the more you'll get out of your college experience. Yeah. Thanks. Heidi? Do what you love. Oh, let's go. Do what you love. And Nate has heard this before, but you know, I, I would get up every morning of high school and have Cheerios with my dad. And my dad would always say, hey, Heidi, are you, are you happy at school? Are you enjoying it? Like, it's so important that you do what you love. You know, I don't care what you do in life as long as you are happy doing it. And I'd go, yeah, yeah, okay, bro, whatever. But you know what? I never thought I'd find myself teaching online in my basement for nine months, right? It's a darn good thing. I love what I do. Yeah. Um, and so I think if you can do what you love, follow that bliss. Don't let someone tell you that, oh, you're not going to make money. You're not going to do this. Do what you love. And if you love what you do and you're passionate about it, you're going to find a way to make that your, your livelihood. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Ask questions and find what you love. Do what you love. That's great. Um, Jeff, Heidi, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to be here to, to, talk, to talk to students and, and answer questions. And good luck with uh, next semester. Thanks so much, Nate. Thanks so much for being here. Um, and now we're going to invite in um, President Scogan. Um, fairly new, I think you'll notice when he's when he's on screen there. Pretty young guy. Young guy right there. Hey, Matt, how are you, President hey, Scogan? Hey, I'm thanks great. For, how are you? Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for joining us this evening. It's great to give you a, give you all a glimpse of hope, a virtual thanks. glimpse of hope. That's right. So Matt, why don't you give us a, like a little, you know, wh wh how'd you get here? How long have you been here? Maybe what, what have the first couple of years been like for you? Uh, yeah, right. So I was here as a student um, 20 years ago. Nate, you and I happened to be uh, roommates and, um, and be pretty good friends. So we were here the same time, graduated the same year. Uh, I majored in, uh, double majored in political science and economics, uh, graduated from Hope in 2002. Uh, went to Harvard for graduate school, studied public policy there, uh, did a master's at uh, Kennedy School of Government at Harvard, and then um, had a career, not in higher education. I spent the first half of my career in government and the second half of my career in business. And then uh, to make a long story short, uh, God called me back to hope uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, I'm just so excited to be here. I never saw this being in my career path, but I I love it, uh, COVID and all, I, I love hope. I deeply believe in this place. This place transformed my life. So I believe in the ability of our institution to transform lives and the chance to come back and serve an institution that served me so well as a student has just been uh, uh, the honor of my life. So yeah, it's been a complicated year and a half to step into this role, uh, but uh, we're, we're in a good place, I think. Hope is in a good place. We've got momentum and I'm excited about, um, about what's happening here uh, through COVID and, uh, and beyond. And that's great. And I wanna get to all of that, but at first I wanna start with, you mentioned 20 years ago. Yeah, we're here together, just having so much fun. Um, but you often talk about advice. When, when, we, when we chat, uh, especially with students present, you talk about advice being so important and, and three piece of, pieces of advice. And you've given me so much advice over the years that I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what the advice you've given me is <laughs> that I want you to touch on. But one certainly concerns your time at Hope um, and is actually before you got to Hope. Um, I think you realize this later, but your dad brought you on a, on, a, on a campus visit to Hope. And can you talk a little bit about how that maybe differed from other campus visits you went on, what you found at Hope 
that was uniquely Hope? Ah, yeah. So I came, uh, I first came to Hope um, in the fall of 1997. And I came here, as you said, with my dad for, uh, for one of the visit days. And um, I experienced the campus and I got to sit in on a couple of classes. And I think, uh, honestly, it's sort of hard to put my finger on it, but I, I think the way to describe it is both it felt like such a good fit. Uh, and a couple others have talked about that tonight, that you should go to a place that feels like it's a, it's a good fit. It also was clear to me that Hope was gonna be a place that stretched me. And um, I love Dr. Krause's response to the question on, uh, on how rigorous is this? Yes, this is a place that will stretch you. And I think you should want to go to a place that will stretch you. You should want to go to a place that will um, uh, transform you. Because if you're if you're if you're good with the way you are now, then maybe you don't need to need to go to college. Uh, so go to a place that will stretch you. And I had that sense. I, I think um, the most important thing that uh, uh, that I observed then in 1997, and it's just as true today as it as it was then, is the the, the sense that coming to Hope I would be known. And I actually came to Hope thinking I wanted to go to a large university. And um, uh, it just became clear that for, for me that going to Hope, I, I would be known. And that means a lot more than our professors knowing our students' name. That means that our professors actually know our students. And I had that sense on, on just the visit day. It turned out to be uh, even more true than I think I imagined it uh, coming into Hope. I got to know my professors and my professors got to know me and they helped put me uh, on a trajectory that I couldn't have gotten on otherwise. And so I think for me, it's, that's kind of the crux of it is, is going to a place where you're known. Yeah. And I, I think Marvelous even mentioned this when, when he was talking about your experience interning at the White House or getting into Harvard. Um, you've told that story before, I, I, but I think it's worth repeating. Um, I don't know. The thing I really want to get to is what you were involved in at Hope and that advice about not filling your plate up just to fill it up. Yeah. Um, but, but to really choose, pick and choose things, maybe like what Dr. Krause said, that give right. you, lo that, that you love, that you love. But can you talk a little bit about the path to either one of those, you could, or both, if you'd like, to the White House or to Harvard? But both of those things uh, happened to me uh, only because there were professors who helped me get those opportunities. Yeah. Uh, I got an internship uh, in the White House while I was a student at Hope. I did a semester in DC. Uh, interning in the White House, and then they actually, the White House kept me on for a summer, so I ended up spending about eight, uh, eight or nine months interning in the White House. I had no political connections, nothing like that. I simply got that because there was a professor here who made phone calls and went to bat for me. And one, one takeaway from that is, and, and to one of the earlier conversations, Hope is a lesser known school. I think we, we, we can admit that. And yet, Hope is a place that's extremely well connected. And I wouldn't have expected coming into Hope that one of my political science professors would have connections uh, in the White House to get me an internship. And yet, uh, that, that was true. Uh, and then the second thing you mentioned, Nate, is going to Harvard. And there, there was a professor here in the history department. And I was actually not even a history major. I just happened to take uh, his class. And I got to know him. And he spent hours and hours with me outside of the classroom working on my on my graduate school application. And I got in because of him. I wouldn't have happened otherwise. And I remember the first time I showed him a draft of my essay, he didn't even give me comments on it. He just sent it, he just gave it back to me and said, it's not good enough. And he was hard on me. And this gets back to the question about rigor. Uh, he was very hard on me. And yet it's it's because of him and really only because of him that I, that I got into Harvard. And that changed my life. I mean, it turns out that's the way the world works. Having Harvard on my resume changed my life and that opened doors for me. And that happened because of a professor here at Hope College, period. And, and how great that that professor was not your advisor, that that, it, that professor was not in your a major content area. That, that professor just wanted you to be successful. Just yeah, wanted that's, to that's right. you that's right. do the next thing. I just, and that's Dr. Mark Baer, of course. I like to say the names just because. <laughs> Give him a yeah. shout out. Yeah, and it gets back to this point of, of being known. Uh, like he had no real um, reason to care about me or get to know me. As you said, I was outside of his academic discipline and yet he did get to know me and he got to know me and care about me enough to help me um, help me be successful. Yeah. Um, okay. So you, you're at Hope, you, you meet great people, um, you get to Harvard, you, you enter the workforce. Um, as you just said a moment ago, this was being the president of Hope College was not in some sort of a 10 or 20 or 30 year plan. It was not in the cards, but you're here and you're here at this incredible time um, where students are still choosing Hope, certainly, but it's different. 
it's different and it's hard. What is the last year, I think you shared with me that you've been a president in a pandemic longer than you were a president before the pandemic. Is that the right, is that right? Yeah, I, I think I realized this uh, sometime over the course of the fall that I'd reached the point where I've been here at Hope as president longer during uh, the COVID era than during a, a normal era. Um, so yeah, honestly, that's kind of depressing, but it's, yeah. it's, it's okay, <laughs> it is what it is. So, but, but with that in mind, you're, you're working tirelessly with, with staff and faculty to, to make this an experience that they can be excited about and proud of. So what types of investments have we put in to keep students here. We're one of the very few schools have been in person all fall and look forward to being in person again in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, we're going to have students back on campus in just about 10 days and I can't wait. Uh, it's been um, it's been a long time. We haven't had students on campus since just before Thanksgiving. Uh, that's when our semester ended. Uh, and so we're ready. We, we've been working hard and we're ready to have students back. Uh, you asked about investments we made, and we did make investments, but I would highlight the fact that what really got us through the semester, the fall semester in a successful way is simply our people. Uh, our faculty, uh, it, their, their efforts were simply Herculean uh, to adjust to new uh, teaching modalities and to get us through, uh, to get us through these crazy times. And our, and our students just showed remarkable commitment and grit. Uh, and so it's really the, the people that got us through. Um, that said, we, we were deliberate and we were intentional about the things we invested in. Uh, when this full academic year is, uh, is all said and done, we will have spent probably between five and six million dollars just on testing. And so we realized early on that um, the, a, a, a critically important part of being able to be in person uh, for a full semester is a, a lot of testing. And so we did a lot of testing in the fall. We'll do a lot of testing in the spring. One specific piece of our testing program that uh, turned out to be incredibly successful is a wastewater testing uh, component of that. And in, in a nutshell, the way it works is that our, um, our uh, a, a, a combination of our chemistry and uh, biology departments, professors in those two departments, developed a, a, an approach to draw samples from the wastewater of our uh, uh, residential halls and residential zones on campus. So essentially what's happening is the, uh, the wastewater coming out of the toilets is being monitored for COVID. And there's a little sensor that's, in, that's embedded in the sewer system. It takes a sample every 20 minutes. And then uh, we have a team that physically collects the samples uh, every 24 hours. So we're essentially for everyone who's living on campus, which is a vast majority of our students, we're testing them more or less in real time every 20 minutes. And then if we noticed the presence of COVID in a particular building, what yep. we would do then is test everyone in that building. And then anyone who tested positive, we would put them in, uh, um, in quarantine space. And uh, so that's another way we invested is that we set aside uh, a lot of space so that we have space for quarantine and isolation. We have a hotel on campus and we dedicated that 100% to, uh, to quarantine and isolation space. And then we also secured some, some other space in our, in our community. Uh, we invested a lot in um, professional development and technology uh, for our faculty. The reality is that being in person uh, even though most of us are in person, uh, every single one of our classes had a, had a hybrid component to it because if someone had to go into quarantine for a couple of weeks, we did not want them to fall behind on their coursework. So they were able to uh, engage in their, even in their in-person classes remotely through technology. So um, a, a lot of investment had to go in there. Yeah, so I think the short answer is we've invested a lot. Uh, we've spent real money on this because we believe in it, because we believe in the... Um, uh, the power of living and learning together. And we developed this mantra over the course of the COVID um, era, keeping hope. And for us, what it boils down to is like, this is worth keeping. There are some things that are worth fighting for, that are worth putting in some effort and worth spending some money on. And one of them is the ability to be in person. And we believe that there are a lot of things that can happen productively over a Zoom call. Hopefully a campus visit is, is one of those. Uh, we simply believe that a rigorous education doesn't happen over a Zoom call. And that's why we were so committed to doing an in-person semester. Uh, we rose to the occasion in the fall and we'll rise to the occasion again in the spring. Yeah, um, one thing you mentioned about wastewater testing, I should have, I should have asked um, Professor Johnson about, it's my fault, but in th those teams you mentioned that are, that are getting the wastewater, those are student, I think, teams, aren't they, in many cases? Yeah, they're led by professors, but there's some yeah. students working on those teams. Yeah. Great I think research opportunities for them. 
Yeah, great research opportunity. So that that's that's a good a good note. Um, okay, so we talked about advice again. So you'd mentioned uh, seeking professors that are going to know you um, when you find a school. Um, I had mentioned for you not filling your plate with just things to add to your resume, but filling things, putting things in your plate that are going to give you life, uh, things that you love, as Dr. Krauss said. The third piece of advice I, I'd love for you to talk about is what you um, you talked about with picking profs and not courses. Oh uh, yeah, right. I think uh, that thanks. I love to... it. Thanks for reminding me of that. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think I learned this too late in my um, in my own academic career. But I think one of the the keys for me, at least, for successful um, successful time in college was was just as you said, Nate, to pick professors, not courses per se. If you know what I mean by that. In other words, find people at Hope who you want to learn from. Find people at Hope who have um, interesting life experiences or who are doing research on things that. Uh, you connect with, or you find um, find passion in, uh, you find passion in, and then get to know them by taking their course. As simple as that. Uh, that's the easiest way to get to know professors is to take their course. And again, it it just goes back to this point that our professors love getting to know our students. For me, that's what made my time at Hope transformational was the professors who got to know me. And uh, so, you know, I think for me that 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 kind of was one of the one of the key takeaways to college, take professors, not courses. That's fantastic. Um, I want to get to one other thing, and I certainly want to, um, if you have other things you want to talk about, but I want to give you a, a, an opportunity to give a fill in the blank. This, this question just came in, um, and it's important for students who are sitting, listening right now, and their parents, um, because next year they want to be in person. And so this question came in, I think it's so great. I'm going to ask you to fill in the blank only, okay? Oh, wow, okay. New type of question for us. So fall 21, 20, 20, 20, 21, I'm getting there. Fall 2021 outlook for in-person learning at Hope College is fill in the blank. If fall of 2021? Yeah. So oh, this it's, is fall. it's uh, I can't think of a strong enough word. It's very, very strong. I, I mean, I, uh, we hold off an in-person semester in the middle of an incredibly complex fall. Um, I think, honestly, I think the spring will test us further, but we rose to the occasion in the fall. We will rise to the occasion in the spring. It's very hard to imagine. It's not impossible, but it's hard to imagine a scenario where the fall of 2021 is more complex than things were this past fall or are now. So yeah, I'm incredibly um, committed to and optimistic that we will be in person uh, in the fall of 2021. I'm also optimistic that we will not only be in person, but hopefully things will be um, a, a, at least a little bit more normal, uh, perhaps even a lot more normal. Uh, the path toward a more normal uh, uh, college environment is, I, I, I've said before, it's not, a, it's not a switch that we just flip at some point, but it's a dial. And um, at some point, as more and more, um, uh, more and more vaccinations are available, we'll be able to turn that dial towards something that looks and feels a lot more normal. Oh, that's great. Thanks. And, and final question from me, at least, is um, one that I asked the students at the top, and that is, what are you more thankful for about hope now than you were before the pandemic? Oh, I, I, I would say two things. One, I alluded to the people, but I mean, by far what got us through this, uh, through, through this crazy season has been our people. They're just incredible people here. Faculty, staff, students, they're just remarkable and stunning people. Um, the second thing I would say, and this may sound a little bit superficial, but it's, it's um, at least it's meaningful to me. Um, yeah. I'm grateful for our name, our name Hope. And I think if you want to look for anything that in a simple way defines what makes us as an institution different and speaks to who we are. It's simply that, it's our name. We're, a, we're an institution and we're a people who believe in hope. And boy, have we ever needed that more than we need it now. Uh, and what that means for us is uh, not that we look at the world and ignore the reality that things are very challenging right now. W what it does mean is that we can look at those challenges in the face and first of all, recognize that because of God's promises, he is a God who takes bad things and turns them into good things. And we uh, know that somehow God can work through everything that's going on in our world now and, um, and do great things through them and in spite of them. Uh, it also means though that we can be a people who don't just think about getting through this. And I think ever since March, so, uh, so much of our mindset has been, I can't wait for this to be over. I can't wait for this to be over. Yeah. By the way, I can't wait for this to be over. So uh, um, th there's, 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 there's real um, sentiment in that. But at the same time, um, we can be a people who find opportunities in the midst of, uh, in the midst of 
these challenges. And there's something profoundly biblical about that. Um, we know that um, uh, after this life, God promises us eternal paradise. And yet we don't spend our whole lives just saying, I can't wait for heaven. I can't wait for heaven. No, we look for ways here and now to engage the culture and to help transform the world. And that means um, we can apply the same mindset to what's going on now. It's not just that we're looking forward for this to be over, but we're looking for opportunities to be salt and light and points of hope uh, in the midst of what we're going through now. So yeah, for me, it'd be those two things, uh, the people that make up this amazing institution uh, and, and our name, which I think sp speaks precisely to who we are and who we aspire to be. Oh, thanks for that, Matt. That's fantastic. Um, I've, I've kept everyone too long. I think we could probably listen and ask questions. If we, you know, if I could ask questions for a long time, but um, I'm going to have to wrap this up. So thanks again for taking time tonight to talk to our, our prospective students and their families. Appreciate you being, being the leader that you are for hope and, and have a great evening. Kind to say it, Nate. Thanks everyone for joining and we'd love to have you at Hope. So I hope to see you here for a visit day and even more than that, I hope uh, to see you here as a student uh, in the fall or whenever your uh, whenever your start date would be. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Matt. And as I said, I'm, I'm sorry to keep you a little bit over. I didn't mean to, um, but wanted to make sure to, to talk with President Scogan there. So I said at the top, I was going to ask, I was going to give you a bit of advice uh, at, the, at the beginning and then a bit of advice at the end. I think this has pretty much been covered, but it bears repeating. And that is what, what I think um, you should be looking for in a college, for what that's worth, for what that's worth. And, and that's looking for a place, you know, it's three things. Looking for a place, number one, to be pushed. Simply put, you should look for a place to grow. College is a time for growth. You should look for a place to grow. Um, number two, Matt, uh, President Scogan just talked about this. Search for a place to be known. And I'm not talking about the seat in the classroom. And, and Professor Johnson talked about that, that he, he knows all the names. That's important. What I'm talking about is that next layer. Um, that President Skogan was talking about of yeah, sitting with you, being a mentor, helping you get to where you want to go, where you're supposed to go. And then finally, number three, and, and President Skogan just talked about this as well, finding a place to be transformed. If, if, you, if you go into college the same way, you, you leave college the same way you went in, I think you did it wrong. You're supposed to go out better, ready to bring salt and light, ready to be that for another community. So with those three things, look for a place to be pushed in and out of the classroom, look for a place to be known, and look for a place where you'd be transformed. Now, that is hope. Hope has all three of those things, but I would encourage you to look for those things in other institutions as well. So thanks again for being here this evening. Please sign up for a visit soon to campus. Um, you can do virtual visits, online visits. Um, Hope.edu slash visit will get you there. But thanks so much for being here this evening and enjoy the rest of your college search. <laughs>